guys how are you hope you are doing fine and that you are safe uh, I don't know about you but it seems that I tend to buy the same perfume over and over again <laughs> not the same same i mean i don't buy uh, dupes of the same perfume but i tend to buy you know in the same style perfumes in the same uh, style uh even if i have a medium large collection and i like to diversify my collection you know when i uh, follow my heart and i like a scent um and i buy it and after that i realize Actually, I realized uh, a week <laughs> back that uh, I have more than two, three, or even four perfumes that smell alike. They are not dupes, one for the other, but they are in the same, you know, style, done in the same style. Uh, does it happen to you? Please uh, uh, let me know in the comments area. And I'm talking about, in this particular video, uh, about the category of perfumes that I, it seems that uh, I am very attracted to. <laughs> it gives me comfort, uh, it resonates with me. Uh, it is true that I uh, started my journey into perfumery, first with Clinique Happy, okay, but uh, in, more, in my more mature uh, years with a white uh, florals. So I am attracted to white florals, but lately I am attracted to the intense, dark, um, noir white florals. Um, the modern take on the intense, dark um, style of white uh, floral perfumes. So if we are looking back uh, in uh, into history, <laughs> okay, into the history of perfumes, the um, dark white floral journey started with the famous or infamous po poison from the 80s, a perfume that I have in my collection but I find difficult to wear, I don't seem to find the right occasion. Then we had Lulu from Cacharel. I find Lulu a more playful femme fatale <laughs> that I quite enjoy and uh, yes I enjoy but mostly in the winter time and uh, it is a beautiful perfume but lately you know the modern take on the white florals are using um, is using uh, some gourmand foodie notes that together with the um, specific aspects of the white uh, florals used in those perfume create uh, I think they intended a sultry uh, feeling <laughs> but what I get is a more a cozy intimate a little bit mysterious but you know a mystery more of an intimate kind of way <laughs> not um, a femme fatale but more a wife a girlfriend, a sweetheart that had some mysterious um, ness <laughs> about her, um, but uh, that uh, you enjoy her company and uh, it doesn't make you feel uncomfortable. Does it make sense? I don't know. It made sense in my head. Anyway, talking about those intense uh, dark, noir, white floral perfumes that usually uh, are uh, placed in beautiful dark color or even black bottles, usually they are in black bottles. Uh, I started my journey with uh, Splendida Jasmine Noir. I did a review uh, on my channel of this perfume and I'm going to put the link in the description, maybe on screen here if I figure it out how to do that. But uh, if not, <laughs> please look in the description. I'm not going to get into too many details because I already did a review, but what I like about this one, it is a perfume that has some woodiness, uh, some darkness, but it is more, you know, a sweet, cozy darkness. It is not a femme fatale darkness. It is not a sultry perfume. It is more mysterious, but in an intimate kind of way. And uh, you have 
even if not listed. So you have Gardenia, you have Jasmine, you have Woody Notes, Cashmeron, but not listed is that Almondy note that was uh, actually listed for the first formulation, not the Splendida that I have. And that Almondy note is that foody gourmand note that I was talking about, and it makes this perfume, it gives this perfume a sweet, bitter vibe. I really like this perfume. It doesn't have a good performance. Maybe this is why I'm looking, you know, for the next beautiful gourmandish white floral, dark, intense, intense white floral. For me, it has like five hours, let's say in winter time, medium projection, but okay, strong for the first two hours and then medium, a skin scent. I enjoy it, but I think I want more. The next one that I bought, or actually, let me talk about the last one, because it was the one that made me realize <laughs> that I have too many of the same perfume, I mean, of the sale, the same style. And uh, it was Lander d'Antance. And I'm going to put a picture because I don't have it anymore. I actually declutter it. After like two weeks, after buying it, I decided it has to go <laughs> to a better home and I made a swap with somebody uh, for another perfume that I really wanted. Yes, yes, you know the story. Uh, it was a very nice perfume. It is a very nice perfume. I tested it on uh, in stores, enjoyed it. I said to myself, okay, I saw a very good offer, always. It is a very good offer, right? On a website, bought it, used it twice. And I, it, it smelled familiar, but not quite so, you know? So it has that um, tuberose as, all the Lanta D line has, and a very strong sesame note. That note gives it sweetness and bitterness, as mon jasmin noir, not mon jasmin noir that I like, and also two other perfumes that I have. I realized, okay, they are not the same, you know, but too much of the same style, and the bitterness was a little bit too much in that one. So after looking at all four of my white uh, florals, intense dark versions, I decided that Lanter d'Antance has to go, but uh, it doesn't mean it is a bad perfume. It stayed a long time on my skin. Actually, pretty good longevity, but not uh, fabulous projection. I mean, after a couple of hours, it was a skin sand, but it lasted for a long time but it became very bitter on my skin. That was the problem. So bye-bye, Lanta Piantance. And the other two perfumes that I still have in my collection, and to be perfectly honest, I don't feel like decluttering them <laughs> because I like each and every one, uh, every, uh, one of them. Um, I like each of them, <laughs> let's just say that. Um, and I find them um, beautiful, um, and they have a place in my heart and in my collection. So we have Larf, uh, Ralph Lauren Woman Antons, this very nice bottle, and I'm going to look for the box because maybe you can see the writing better. Okay, this was a very nice uh, find. Um, I owe this to a friend of mine, Diana. Thank you very much. And she recommended this to me. She knew my style, I think. <laughs> this is beautiful. This has more tuberose than jasmine, but it has also some jasmine, some orange blossom in the middle. As top notes, you have rhubarb, pink pepper, neroli, some citrus notes, I think. I'm gonna put all of them uh, on the screen for you. So it has a very bright, happy, playful beginning. Um, it starts very playful. Then it settles into a very creamy, almost almondy experience for me, on my skin. So as the middle, you have the flowers, the uh, jasmine, the tuberose, quite strong here, and the orange blossom. And in the base, you have black vanilla, um, sandalwood, and um, 
amber, amber wood, amber wood. So you have the sandalwood. I think the creaminess comes from the sandalwood. But even in the base, it still remains a little bit more playful. So if that one is more elegant, um, intimately mysterious, this one stays more playful, at least on my skin, with some creaminess. Uh, so yes, it is a very... It has some uh, sensuality to it, but not in a femme fatale kind of style, more in the woman that you love and that you already know and that you want you know, to feel intimate with. Uh, yes, sensual, feminine, pretty elegant also. Uh, but the performance, I saw a lot of reviews that it has good longevity, good projection, not in my case, unfortunately, so I have medium projection with this one. And the longevity, I don't know. I mean, after a couple of hours, maybe three, four hours, actually, I start uh, not to feel it anymore. I don't know if I'm anosmic to something in it, or it is my skin that has something. But a lot of people consider it to be a very good... Uh, perfume with good performance. So maybe it's just me. I don't know. I have a bad batch or it's just me. Quite lovely anyway. And before I purchased uh, Lanter Diantans, or actually around the same time, I just couldn't help myself to buy something. I think you already know what it is. If you watch YouTubers uh, raving about uh, some perfumes. So, we had, and we still have, a very hyped uh, private line perfume, Rouge Malahit. Maybe I'm going to put a picture on the screen, but I think you know what I'm talking about. From the Armani line, Privé line. A very expensive perfume. Beautiful, yes. Long-lasting, yes. Projecting, yes. Uh, but very expensive. And um, I had a decant of Rouge Malahit. I used it. I love it, but it has a note, a mentholated note, sage, clary sage, I think. Anyway, it didn't agree with me, that note. And since it is so expensive, I said to myself, okay, let's not go into that. I mean, when you love an expensive perfume, you have to really love it and to, it has to work with your skin and everything. But I went on Fragrantica and I saw that it resembles, or the other one resembles Rouge Malahit, actually. Dolce & Gabbana, the only one intense, intense version. This is the presentation. And this is the box for the 30ml bottle. I hope you can see it. And it does. <laughs> so the point is that it does. I saw different reviews, uh, Paulina Char, um, Karim Wolf, I hope I'm not pronouncing her name uh, wrong, but you know what I'm talking about if you are watching the same reviewers as I am on YouTube. This is a beautiful perfume. So, uh, it starts with some citric notes. I think you have mandarin, uh, Neroli, if I'm not mistaken, but anyway, I'm going to put uh, the notes uh, on the screen. In the middle, you have jasmine coconut. I would say it has also tuberose, but they are not listing this on Fragrantica. But it smells so similar to Rouge Malahit that I can't... I definitely smell something like tuberose, but okay, not tuberose, just jasmine. The coconut makes it so creamy and nice. And in the base you have vanilla, cedar, cashmere wood. Anyway, I'm going to put uh, the notes on the screen for you. So I get the same vibe <laughs> from the other two, uh, but this one uh, has better performance on me, at least, okay? It stays longer on my skin. I can feel it after six hours now when it is cold outside. And it kind of projects, you know? But it is the one that has the most foodie foodie feeling especially when you first spray it after a couple of hours actually i have it on my skin here it's softer 
it becomes more of a skin scent but it stays there with you especially if you um, spray it on your neck and you hit also your hair a little bit it's gonna stay longer it's gonna linger around you in a very beautiful way and um, I don't know it is sweeter uh, bittersweet also but sweeter uh, than uh, Jasmine Noir for sure and I think also more sweet than uh, Ralph Woman Intense. Anyway, they are in the same style done. So you have a white floral, the modern dark white floral that has a brimond note and a bitter sweetness about it and a very um, creamy, woody uh, base dry down, okay? This one is the better performing for me from all of them all of them but um, anyway I would have to use it more wear it more for now uh, it became a favorite at mine so I have a lot of perfumes I bought perfumes yes I bought perfumes in March you are going to see my video I don't know if I'm going to put that one or this one first and from all of them, this is the one that I wore for two, three days in a row. And I rarely do that nowadays since I have so many perfumes. A beautiful perfume. Do check it out before you buy it. Please let me know if you have uh, encountered the same uh, situation <laughs> as me, where you buy a new perfume and it turns out to be in the same style, almost the same perfume that you already have, or if you are collecting the same type of perfumes. I'm trying to diversify, but okay, sometimes we just do what our heart <laughs> is telling us, right? If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for you to not miss uh, any of my videos. Stay safe. Bye-bye.